Right, problem that comes uh, to many boaters is that uh, when they've got a shaft drive like this, um, sooner or later it's going to start to drip and uh, we're going to show you uh, what you have to do when it's just simply dripping like this. So what we're going to do is take this bit of paper towel and just put it underneath so that it makes it a lot clearer and then you can see it dripping. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's just dripping from the bottom of the stern tube there about once every six seconds. It's important that um, any stern tube uh, dry packing like we have here, um, that it does drip a little bit. Uh, once every 30 seconds to a minute is perfectly okay. Any more than that, and it's a little bit excessive. And as you can see, as I showed you, you can see this one's dripping far too much. So what you simply have to do is to loosen the back nut off, which is this nut here, and then tighten the cap nut up. That tightens down on the packing inside and just puts a little bit more pressure on the shaft, which is this section here. Important that you don't over tighten the nut because that will over compress the packing and make it too too tight and then the shaft won't move and it'll get hot and you'll be in even more trouble so what we have to do slacken this nut and then gently tighten this nut up until we've just stopped it dripping um, and then re-tighten the locking nut back on to the cap the uh, front nut without moving it so i'm just going to hold cap nut and then I'm going to release the backing nut and sometimes it's really tight and sometimes it goes all of a sudden there you go so we're going to release that First of all, back it off, just a fraction, don't worry, water won't come gushing in, um, the drip might increase slightly, but it won't be um, absolutely pouring in, and you have to do this afloat, you can't do this uh, with the boat in the dry dock. So then I'm just going to bring that up ever so slightly. Let's as I can get it by hand and I'm just going to put very slight turn there just enough to clamp that down take a piece of dry paper wipe it off underneath so it's nice and dry and now, as you can see, perfectly dry. And then, pull the backing nut back up. And then, holding the front nut, To it fairly tight because I don't want that to come undone. Take off the locking nut, double check, a little bit of moisture under there, so that's good. Remember, we're not trying to make it perfectly dry, we want it to just drip once every minute, 30 seconds to a minute, but not much more than that. Right, so we've successfully tightened all, all the nuts up here. We've ascertained that it's still moist underneath. But what we want to double check is that the shaft still turns 
freely and that we haven't over tightened the packing. Now on this arrangement um, I don't have any means of turning the shaft with a, a nut or any form of um, hole through the shaft where I can put a bar in and bar it over. So what I'm going to do is just put a socket on the coupling nuts and making sure I turn clockwise as I turn the nuts you can see with very little effort the shaft is turning and I'll turn it two or three times round just helping to settle the packing in to its new tension okay so then yeah we're still getting moisture underneath and we double check now to see how much it's dripping various different styles of dry packing like this uh, a com this is a common American coupling a common European or English coupling would have a plate with two bolts either side pushing on not a nut but on a sleeve that goes over the shaft and pushes inside the stern tube here which compresses the packing and there basically what you have to do is just slightly uh, the nuts will have, again have locking nuts on release the knocking locking nut and then tighten the locking nuts uh, tighten the nuts up until the um, plate pushes and compresses the packing inside the stern tube and stops, stops it leaking. Another type of packing would also have a grease uh, container with a screw on it and you have to turn those every mm, couple of hours you put like a quarter of a turn onto the grease packing to just increase the, the amount of grease inside the stern tube. And as we can see We've had a couple, one drip, yeah, seems to be fine. While we're looking at the stern gland, just a little tip, you'll see on the shaft here is a Jubilee clip. It actually serves two purposes on this, in this case. I'll just turn the shaft around a little bit more so you can see. Now we can see the drive key. The shaft has a slot milled in it when it's manufactured and the coupling also has a corresponding slot and then when you put the coupling on the shaft you put in a drive key. This key actually locks the coupling to the shaft and prevents it slipping and you will have seen as the, as the coupling went round there is a bolt here there's another bolt there at 90 degrees. Those are then tightened up to pull the coupling onto the shaft and secure that key. These, are the, these bolts are then wired together so there's no chance of them coming undone. And then we put a Jubilee clip on the shaft just in case that key decides to move back. As you can see the Jubilee clip is on the shaft there and it's, it's holding that in place as a, as a precaution. Also, should anything go wrong with the coupling and shafts sometimes will break and if they break, they'll break at this point here just outside the coupling. And what the Jubilee clip does, it then the shaft will move backwards until the Jubilee clip hits the um, stern gland and it won't go any further. So it actually stops the shaft from disappearing out the back of the boat. Of course, if it disappeared out the back of the boat, you'd lose your shaft, you'd lose your propeller, but more importantly, you'd have an inch and a quarter, in this case an inch and a quarter hole, in the boat and water would come gushing in. So, not always fitted by manufacturers, um, but it's a tip that I picked up many, many years ago. Just put a Jubilee clip on the shaft, behind the, the key on the drive coupling, 
or if you've got a longer shaft some six inches away from the um, uh, um, stern gland and uh, just tighten it onto the shaft should anything happen to the shaft it can't then actually drop out the back of the boat and what we'll do now is just put the generator exhaust back in place and as you can see things are very very tight in this installation and I'm always very concerned about um, things rubbing and uh, generally I check constantly to make sure there's no chafe anywhere um, and that's it see you next time